folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We're just picking up our Amazon D9-4000, which we're going to be taking back home, and we're going to be starting our planting. Uh, you know what? I'm thinking I ought to change the seed type over now, lest I forget. There we go, grass. And once we get this one back, we're going to spread fertilizer on the field, and then we're going to spread, uh, spread, we're going to plant grass across the entire field as well. And then when we've done the planting, we will apply another coat of fertilizer, and then all we've got to do is wait for it to grow. So we'll harvest a few more trees while we're waiting. Now, I asked you all a question last week. Did you want me to do arable crops next, or did you want me to get the Ponzi scorpion next? In order to do arable crops, we would have had to get arable storage. Um, we'd have had to get a combine. We, well, we, we have to. Um, but the, the scorpion won the votes by quite a margin. We had 574 votes, we had 148 for arable, and we had 426 in favour of buying the scorpion. So most of you felt that buying the scorpion was the way forward, and that we should do arable after that. A few of you said that, you know, buying the scorpion means doing forestry to buy the scorpion, and then doing more forestry in order to be able to um, move on to the next bit. Um, I would argue against that, you know, that we, we're going to have to do some forestry anyway. We're planting grass, so we're going to be able to get some profit from the grass. And getting the scorpion means that we'll be able to advance to other bits faster because we'll be able to cut the logs down faster and we'll be able to um, get the, the best uh, the, the best amount of money for the logs as well because every ha, e having everything at eight meters means that we'll get the best possible price for everything so that's that's kind of what i was thinking um i've been trying to think of what sort of question i could ask you for this week and honestly other than like you know should we go for this machine or this machine i haven't really got anything that is going to affect the gameplay for this coming week or for the next couple of weeks so there's not going to be a question this week and maybe we will um whenever there's a, a more important event to decide then i will put it to a vote but right now i don't think we need to worry about putting it to a vote you know this setup right here this really reminds me of FS13. When I played FS13, I don't have that copy of the game anymore because I downloaded it and just had the key on my PC. That PC gave up the ghost many years ago, um, the, and I don't have it anymore, so I've, I've just kind of lost that copy. Um, but what I used to do was I would have the direct drill on the back, and I had the New Holland T8, I think it was a T8, direct drill on the back, and then the uh, the smallest fertilizer the game fertilizer spreader the game had on the front. The setting was for the hired help to buy everything that it needed, and I would set I would go round the the outside round myself. I would put the fertilizer spreader going, and then I would put the seed drill going, and do the outside couple of rounds of the field myself and then I would just set the hired help going and the one thing with FS13 is it didn't turn off the fertilizer spreader it would just leave the fertilizer spreader going continuously so yes there would be overlap there would well there'd be a lot of overlap it would sort of like double up but the speed that it would do I had the entire map that the, the base game map there not the Westbridge Hills one the other one I think it was Hagenstedt um, I had that one, every single field ploughed right out to the very edges, and I had three, I think, maybe four of these all set, I think it was three, I, I had three of these setups, uh, so I would do a couple times around the outside edge, or a couple times along two ends, if it was, you know, square enough field, and then I would set the hired help going, and, and let it just finish off the rest. And I could put each one going, and I could keep all three... I'm sure it was three, actually. Keep all three tractors running, 
without any trouble whatsoever, and I'd get the entire map done in three, maybe four hours of gameplay. Might have been less than that. I did used to get it done very, very quickly. I could get through and get the whole lot planted really quick because of keeping the fertilizer spreaders on the front and having the seed drills on the back. It all rushed through really, really fast. It was awesome, actually. It was a really, really good system. It worked beautifully well. And I kind of miss those days. It's got to be said. I do kind of miss those days. Uh, it was very, very simple. It was a simpler time in Farming Simulator back then. It was a much simpler time. But still, we have lots of fun playing this game now, so there's, there's no need to be too nostalgically upset. Um, we've got everything that we've got here now. We've got things here that we never even dreamed possible in FS13. So I'm going to bring you over this way. We're going to park this one over here for now. We will drop the fertilizer spinner there. So I'll lower you down. Dump that one there. And then I'm going to bring this one back over here. And I'll drop that one back there. I'm going to want that uh, front weight in a minute. And we'll drop you over there. Like that. And then we'll take this pallet right here and we'll put that on the wool pallet collection point for the sheep. I've got it on Euros. It should not be on Euros. Let's just change that over a minute. Uh, there. There we go. Right. There's our field that we've got. And we've got about double that going up to here. That's where we've cut so far. So we've got a huge area up here, plus all of this all the way back up here that we still haven't cut. We haven't done anything to that yet. So we, we've got plenty of timber at the moment. We're not going to run shy of timber at the moment. Let's drop that one down in there. So we've now got two wool pallets on our map. We can go and get a little bit. Actually, you know what? We're... Oh, no, water. We're now in a position that we can get some sheep on here. So what I'd like to do is I'll load up the water first before I go and get anything. And then we're going to get our sheep. And we're going to get one bale of grass... And we're going to get that one in here. And then after we've done that, then we'll worry about planting and uh, other such things. So, we we'll start filling up. We don't have to pay for that one to be filled. That's fantastic. Right, so I can leave that one filling a minute. And while that's filling, I'm going to come over here and we are going to buy our first sheep. So remember, all we've got to do is we've got to put grass in for these. We don't have to put anything else in. So we can go for white sheep. We can go for... So that right there, we've got a kind of a, a mule or a Texan sheep. Uh, a Texan? Uh, a blue blue face, a, a Leicester sheep, something like that. Um, I think Merinos. They're, they're white. They're all white, aren't they? I'm not quite sure. The Australian sheep. Um, that looks a bit like a Manx sheep or a, a brown Shetland. Um, that's a Shetland. And then you've got Suffolk's over here. You know, Suffolk's are the ones that I've dealt with mostly. Well, no, those and the, the, the other ones that I've dealt with a lot are called Beulers. And they're little Welsh mountain sheep. And they're black and white speckled on the face. Um, white wool, but black and white speckles on the face rather than pure black. Uh, but I quite like the brown. We're, I think we're going to go with brown on this map. We'll go with brown sheep. So we'll go over to there. And that's as much, that's as many as I can, I can afford five sheep. So we will confirm that. We'll have five sheep. We've now got, oh, wait a minute. Frith, you idiot. You forgot to buy, I forgot to buy fertilizer and seed. That was, um, that was rather foolish on my part. Right, we'll have to deal with fertilizer and seed tomorrow. It might be that we've <laughs> we've got to go and get some more timber just to do the fertilizer and seed. Do I have any timber left on the ground? I may have some left up there. I don't really remember. Right, we'll, we'll unload that into there. That's all we're going to unload into there. So I will just drop the water trailer right where it is. We don't need to worry about that one anymore. Then I will bring this tractor up over here, and the next thing I want is I want to do a little bit of mowing. 
So if I go... Yeah, I'll go over here. We want to get a... Well, we want one bale, essentially. That's all we're going to want is a single bale. So I don't think I need to do anything other than just mow and then run the baler along behind. So we put that one on there. And I'll unfold it. We'll leave the front loader on. We may as well. Bring this one round here. All i got to do is make sure that I don't... Um, drive into any tree stumps with the mower. Because that really doesn't do a mower a lot of good, driving into a tree stump. I'm sure of it. I've never actually driven into a tree stump. I've driven into a gatepost. Told you about that before. Um, so I have driven into a gatepost with the mower. It, it, it wasn't intentional, but it still happened. Um, the owner was not pleased. Um... So yeah, I've, I've done that, but I, I've never driven into a tree stump with a, a, a mower. I'm going to take that as a good thing. I'm going to just assume that it's a good thing that I've never done that. Bring you down. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I drove into one there. My, my perfect record has now been sullied. My record has been destroyed. I'm going to unfold that. I don't know how much is left in the mower that we've got uh, in the round baler. There's, there could very well be a bit of grass left in it anyway. Let's bring that over there. And then you've got to do it like that, unfortunately. That might be enough grass. That might not actually be enough grass. We may have to go and get a little tiny bit more. Now, the great thing about this is that I can unload the baler direct into the sheep pen. So we'll go and get that one. Hook that one on. We've got... I've got n none. Uh, absolutely none in here. What? I thought I had some. Has something happened to this baler that... Did I do something different? Did I maybe leave it... Oh, no, I did... I. I went and um, I mowed a little bit extra, didn't I? Until I had enough to make up one complete bale. And then I stopped at one complete bale, didn't I? That's what I did. Right. Well, we got 20%, 25% just from once around on this little bit. So we'll easily be able to do a bale on here. And we'll take that one bale over to the sheep pen and we'll empty it out. And that will keep them going. They've got water, they've got grass... Which means that they're going to start producing wool. Now, we can't actually do anything with the wool until they reach 10,000 litres of wool production. So even though we've only got five, we've still got to wait for the 10,000 litres. And I think that's... You know, it's only fair. You know, we, we've, we can't expect the bloke to come all the way up the mountain to buy wool if he's only going to be buying, like, 10 litres of wool. He's, he's, he's just not going to do that, is he? That's not going to be a thing. Right. He's now filled that up. We've got some grass left. I suppose I could go over and I could reload the baler and get that as well. We'll have a look at that in a minute, I suppose. Let's take this over this way first. I'll bring that back round there. So I could get the rest of that little bit of grass into the baler, even if we're not actually going to use it. It could still be quite useful. I'm going to bring you to there, and then empty that bale out. In it goes. And now let's have a look at our sheep. Right there, 2,500 litres. I'm feeling a little bit cheated by that, because that's more than 2,500 litres. So I am definitely feeling cheated. I don't know if it does actually disappear or if it kind of holds it in like a no man's land type situation and it will use it, it you know, it, it, we sort of come back to it later on and it just keeps generating it out. I don't actually remember how that works. Pretty sure with the horses that it looked like it was full, but then it kept going more and more and more. And we kept getting extra turning up, which was like the hidden bit of the food that was there, then turning up on the map. So whether that's going to happen with this, I don't really know. We'll find out. Let's keep going round. We've got most of it now. There's a couple little strips at the top, but that's another 25% of a bale, which is enough to keep our sheep very, very happy. 
there, we'll put that up through there. I mean, we're going to be wanting to do some more baling soon anyway. I'm seriously considering getting rid of this baler and getting the one that's got the inline wrapper on it. Because, mainly because we tried that one out in the live stream and that baler seems to have a much wider pickup than this one. The bit that I don't like about this baler is the pickup on it is so narrow. It seems too narrow for realism. Um, it's It like leaves a lot of stuff out the side and anybody who's ever used a baler knows that it doesn't tend to leave all that much out the sides. It tends to like grab it and haul it in because the grass grips together and the hay grips together. So it sort of, it bugs me that it it's such a narrow um, infeed on this baler and I think it would actually look better if it wasn't quite so narrow as it is but there we go it, it, it is what it is um, we'll put that one back over so I've gathered up the bit of grass that was in there I know it's not particularly realistic leaving this grass in here uh, but we'll work with it we'll run with that I think that's going to be alright bring you back there we go back a bit more and I'll leave that one there okay that's that stage done so next up I'm going to want seed and I'm going to want fertilizer I went and foolishly bought the sheep before making sure I had some of each so now I'm going to be shy seed and fertilizer but if we go and we have a look here that's uh, the growth right there it says it needs plowing and it says it needs lime but if you zoom in here it's actually got a double layer already. It's saying that it's already fertilized. So I don't think we actually need to worry about fertilizer at all this time round. Now that I'm looking at it. We know that plowing, it's been tested for me on the Discord. A couple of people tested it. Patreon tested it. Uh, Batstar tested it. And Ryder tested it as well. Um, the plowing and the lime has all been tested. Lime and ploughing requirements on the fields have made absolutely zero difference to the yield that came off of fields for um, needing uh, for grass. It had made absolutely no difference. Even though it said that it needed ploughing, it still made no difference to the actual yield that came off the field. There was zero difference on it whatsoever. So let's back you up to there like that and then... Fill that one up. Right, 830 litres. That filled that one right up. We have now filled it with seed. But it's um, used up most of our money. Now, it does depend. Are we going to use 830 litres of seed to plant this field? Unfortunately, I can't use hired help to do this. I haven't bought any hired help lodgings. So, that's not something I'm going to be able to use. Which means that I do have to plant all of this, uh, all of this manually, which I didn't really want to have to do. But there we go. We can cope with that. It's just quicker and easier if you can use the hired help to do it. But you know, obviously, the hired help does cost money, which we don't really have. Let's put that one in there. Bring you on up round here. You know, what I suppose really. Uh, this would be a little bit more realistic. Well, uh, realism aside, I suppose this one really ought to have the front weight because that's a fair weight of... We, we do have a fair weight on, on the back there. So even though we've got the front loader on here, which would sort of work all right, uh, I think it would be better to use a front weight on there rather than that one. So if I take that one off a minute... And I'll go over and I'll get that front weight on. Then we can carry on doing our grass planting. It's going to take a little while to do the grass planting. But I do stand by my decision for getting the 4 meters um, seed drill rather than 3 meter one. I think this is one that we're going to be glad we've got. And yes, it's only 830 liters in there. So we are going to have to refill fairly frequently. But on the plus side... You know, we don't have all that much in the way of land at the moment. And you've also got... Oop, nope. That one up. Let's show you. 
I don't know why it always selects the tractor now. Since the update, since the 1.3 update, it always selects the tractor, where even when the tractor itself doesn't really have any options. And I do find that annoying. Uh, but anyway, our seed is right next to the field, so I don't think that is going to affect our gameplay very much. I think it's going to be pretty convenient, actually, having that right there. We we can set the hired help working on this field, and it's going to work out just fine, because it's only got a really, really short trip to go to refill the seed drill. Um, we're not going to be... The problem when you get further away from the seed tank is using a small tank sea drill as you spend half your time driving to and from the sea tank. This at the moment we won't. It's just a very quick sprint to the end of the field, reload and then back into the land again. And that I think is absolutely fine. Now it's six o'clock in the evening. I want to get this... Oh, that is one thing that we have said is allowed. Whilst planting we can go down to one time speed. So we'll put this down to one time speed. Once we're done with the planting, we'll then just um, skip straight forward to night time. All right, I've had a drink. Let us continue onwards. There's one pass all the way around the outside of our field. The very first planting that we have done here on Boulder Creek. Boulder Canyon. Boulder Creek, Boulder Canyon. Um... Which is not bad, really. I mean, it is admittedly like 30-odd episodes that we've done here before we've actually done our very first planting. But I still think we're not doing too bad. You know, we've cleared a substantial amount of land. We've, we've removed a lot of trees from this land. I think we've removed more trees from here than we did in the Pacific Inlet one by this point. Um, although the whole of the Pacific Inlet one was a little bit shorter than this series. Cause it, mainly because we had to, like, stop and, and go on and play the new game. You know, FS19 came out. Kind of threw a spanner in the works. That did. Now, I've done two passes on this end. I'm thinking that's going to be enough. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make use... Because we're keyboard steering... I'm going to make use of the keyboard steering. We're going to bring it up here, and it naturally drives in quite a straight line. So all you've got to do is get it lined up at the end, and then we can just kind of leave it going up through. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job of that. And that will give us nice long lines as well. So we can just go up, turn on ourselves, and then come back down again. I'll do another pass up this end, just to tidy it up a bit. And, yeah, so we can keep it out a little bit, but I don't want to keep it out too much. I would rather overlap than end up not planting enough. You know, I'd rather have overlap all the way through than risk doing, um, leaving spaces. Spaces would not be good. Let's do that there. Go along this way. Right, I don't need to go quite that tight. There we go. Bring that sort of out like that a little bit. He's on round this corner. It's going to be a little bit more troublesome there. Ooh. Have I left it? I don't think I even left a gap there. So I, I can stay a reasonable way out. Now, I did say I was going to go up and down. But the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking, you know, having to do a little bit of steering is probably not all bad. And... Um, we can just come in this, uh, go up and down the sides, but just like the outside edge of the field rather than doing a slice in the middle. I think it would just be quicker to do it like this. There, bring that one up to there and then lift like that. Race across this way. And the, the racing bit will get shorter and shorter with every pass. There, and then lower that one down there, and then we're away again. And you can see already in the distance, we've got grass planted. We're not going to get all of the grass planted in this episode. Well, I don't think we will. We get, we get, we get a good chunk of it done, but we won't get all of it done. I think would be the case. Um, but I am thinking that we could very well get all of it planted with the one seed drill. We've only used fourteen percent or fifteen percent now. 15% of the seed, that's all we've used. 
and it's not using up very quickly. Grass seed is a very um, small seed, so it doesn't take up very much volume in, you know, for the area that you cover. You don't, you don't need to use very much grass seed to cover a large area, and that's a really good thing about it. So let's drop that one down there. Onwards again. See, every time we move, well, down the other end, it, we have to move a bit further because it's slightly triangle-shaped. Only slightly, though. It's not all that much triangle-shaped. I've never actually planted grass with a tractor-mounted seed drill. I've planted grass by hand, where I just have handfuls of seed and broadcast it by hand. Uh, I've done that over sometimes a, a reasonable-sized area. Um, you know, like a half an acre. Um... Anything bigger than that, you, you really would want to see drill, wouldn't you? But, yeah, I so I've done a little bit of, of planting that. And I know plenty of people who've planted grass seeds and they don't use a seed drill for it at all when they're planting it in a field. They put it in their fertilizer spinner. They, they put all the grass into the fertilizer spinner and they just drive around the field with that. Um, mainly because, you know, the grass seed is as far as seed where it used to be. I'm going back several years now. I'm going back a good 20 years. It used to be that grass seed was one of the cheapest seeds you could get. I don't know if it is now. But because it was so cheap, it just slung into the fertilizer spinner and went took off across the field with the fertilizer spinner going and spread the grass out like that. Um, grass seed had less of a problem being taken up by birds. If you were to go and broadcast a load of wheat like that, then, yeah, you may have more issues with it. I do know people who've planted uh, wheat with a fertilizer spinner as well. Um, I know people who've planted quite a lot of arable crops with a fertilizer spinner and then they go along afterwards with the cultivator and that uh, cultivates them all in because all you're doing is you're broadcasting them. Same way as used to be done. You know, people used to broadcast by hand and they just walk along and they'd throw it out by hand or they would use like a, a fiddle spinner. The fiddle spinner is this thing um, it's basically it's a box that you hold in front of you. It's got a big strap that goes over your arm, uh, up over your shoulder. And it's got a box, it's got a bag sort of that's sat on top of it. And then you've got this uh, fiddle stick. And you, you know what a, a, a you know the, the bow on the violin or the cello? Uh, it kind of, it's a bit like that. You, you just got this long stick with a handle on it that goes through the middle of the fiddle spinner. And that causes it to spin a plate. And the plate is almost identical to the plate that you get at the bottom of the fertilizer spinners that we've got in the game. And just spins it round and round and round. So you walk along and you manually spin this plate around. And as it's manually spinning round, that's broadcasting the seed spreading across the field. It's very, very hard work using a fiddle spinner. Right? Extremely hard work. Anybody I know that has ever had to use one when they were young, you generally talking anyone that's uh, 60 years plus, anybody I know that's ever had to use one when they were younger, um, always were rather glad when something else came along to replace the fiddle spinner. Uh, or, you know, it was broken and so unable to be used. Nobody seemed to like actually using the fiddle spinner. It was uh, not, not the most pleasant of tasks to go and do. A lot of hard work. And, yeah, uh, I, I can understand, having seen the things, I can understand it's a lot of hard work. And I know that there are people who would prefer to go along with a bucket and just literally pick up the handfuls of grain and spread them by hand. The reason the fiddle spinner was used is because it could spread further than just doing it by hand. And it would spread more evenly as well, so long as you used the thing correctly. Uh, you had to keep an even movement going on the actual fiddle arm in order to keep a nice even spread on the fiddle spinner, but it was definitely a... It did a better job than just throwing the seed around by hand, but I know a lot of people who infinitely preferred throwing the seed by hand to using the fiddle spinner. And then along came the tractors and, you know, you got the horse-mounted seed drills. Those are better again, you know, a, a horse-drawn seed drill or a, a tractor-drawn seed drill, that's, that's a wonderful idea. Or you get a, um, a tractor with a fertilizer spinner on the back, you just load the seed into that and away you go. You didn't have to walk up and down the field, you didn't have to be spreading it, you didn't have to be throwing the stuff around, you didn't have to be wrestling with a great heavy bag of seed and a, a 
a, a fiddle spinner as well, which wasn't the lightest thing. Because, obviously, the more seed you can carry, the less times you've got to walk to the seed bags at the end of the field to reload the fiddle spinner. And that was one of the other issues with it, was that you're constantly having to run backwards and forwards to kind of reload the thing. Or you had to carry your own body weight in seed with you wherever you went. And neither one of these was a particularly pleasant option. So, there's... Um, there is very good reason that the fiddle spinner wasn't particularly well loved by anybody. And in the comment section, I would very much like to hear from anybody that has ever actually used a fiddle spinner. Um, for that matter, I'd like to hear from anybody that even knows what a fiddle spinner is. Does anybody have any clue what I'm talking about? Has anybody ever actually seen one being used? They are a very old piece of machinery. It's, it's a very old, antiquated piece of machinery. I maybe maybe they make fiddle spinners now for um uh, small holdings and and people who work on small you know run small holdings and that and maybe there's a modern version of a fiddle spinner i've got no idea there could be it could be a thing that is used nowadays i i don't actually know though i'm, I'm afraid i couldn't tell you one way or another whether a, a fiddle spinner is a, a thing that is now used and sort of got a modern version of it or not uh who knows get into the comment section and tell me all about your own personal experiences with fiddle spinners if you have any or if you know people that have used them in the past uh if you don't maybe ask someone if if you have anything to do with agriculture because uh, I know that I appreciate that not everybody does. So not everybody's going to be able to... It, it's got people on hand that they can ask. But if you don't personally know anything about a fiddle spinner, if you've got anybody in your life that is an old farmer, ask them. See if they know anything about fiddle spinners. And if they do, do they remember them fondly? Or do they absolutely detest them and we're glad to see the back of them? Net, 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 you know... I know a lot of farmers who are sorry, you definitely were sorry to see a lot of the old machinery go and, you know, it, it saddens them that a lot of these things are now gone and they'll never be used again, but I've yet to find one that is particularly saddened by the loss of the fiddle spinner. Every single one of them, oh yeah, I'd use one of them. Glad to see the back of that one. <laughs> It's it's quite I mean, even the most nostalgic of farmers, the the ones that really do long for the good old days when all these wonderful things happened. All you got to do is remind them of the fiddle spinner, and suddenly things isn't looking so bad. Suddenly things is looking absolutely wonderful. Because oh yeah, well I suppose at least I don't have to use that anymore. Well I wouldn't have to do it. That that was a young man's game. That was. You'd be using that one. You would. Would I? Why wouldn't I be using a tractor? I've seen the fiddles. I've never actually used one myself, but I have seen them being used. I have seen them. I know how heavy that thing would be. I know how awkward it is to go and use it. I'm... No. No. Not, not unless I was absolutely forced to. Much like the farmer in question themselves, who do not lament the loss of the thing at all, I personally would not have go and use the fiddle spinner unless... I was absolutely forced to by circumstances completely beyond my control. That is the only time that I would ever consider using a fiddle spinner. Anyway, we have run out of time for today's episode, so we're not going to finish doing the planting. We've come close to finishing the planting. We're not going to be using up all of the seed to finish this, which is absolutely wonderful. It means that we have had enough money to be able to get it all planted, which is good. Uh, we've got five sheep now, and we've got our field uh, mostly planted. Um, which means that in the morning, well, I suppose actually in the morning, we might be cutting down a few more trees. We'll, we'll have another go at cutting down a few trees, shifting some of those, and um, just, just kind of surveying our domain, our kingdom, and, and waiting for our grass to grow. That's going to be the next thing, is we need to wait for the grass to grow so that then we can do some more mowing. I would like to, ideally, before this grass is grown, spend the $25,000 necessary to get the um, the cabin up here for the hired help. We're also going to be looking at getting some better accommodation. We've been living in a tent for quite some time now. We need a better house for ourselves. 
Right, that is going to be... That's, that's moving up the priority list fairly rapidly now. So we're going to be looking at that as well. Uh, but that's all in tomorrow's episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.